This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning how to use at class method in Python. Because previously we covered how we could use the at static method decorator inside our classes. But of course, it's good to know how both of these work. So to get started, I'm going to import from the typing module, the self type. Then I'm going to create that infamous class, the class called car. And this class is going to contain one class attribute, which keeps track of how many cars have been created. So here we can type in total cars, which will be of type integer. And that will initially be set to zero. What's important to note here is that we're creating this directly inside the class, not inside the initializer. But immediately below that, we're going to create our initializer. And that's going to take a brand of type string and a top speed for that car, which will be of type integer, because I don't want to deal with decimals. Then the self.brand will equal the brand and the self.top speed is going to equal the top speed. And every time we initialize a new car, we're going to want to increment the total number of cars by one, because we're creating a new car, obviously. So inside here, we're going to type in car, and that refers to the class. We're not referring to the instance anymore. We are referring directly to the class, which means we can affect this attribute over here. So car dot total cars plus equals one. Now with that being put into place, we can create a few cars. One's going to be a BMW of type car, and it's going to equal a car with the brand set to BMW and the top speed set to, let's say 250. And just by creating this instance, we can actually refer to the car itself, the class, and check how many cars we now have. And if we were to run this, you should see that we have one car now. And if we were to create a second car, such as a Volvo, which would of course be of type Volvo with a speed of 270, then we would have two total cars. So as you can see, the class attribute affects all of the cars. And if we were to change this car dot total cars to 100, that Volvo would carry on that information. Now, a lot of beginners make the mistake of referring to the instance and trying to access the attribute of total.cars. This here will not access the information we want. This is going to only access the instance attribute or even create it, which means that now if we were to run this, as you can see, it did nothing in terms of the car class. It turned this into an instance attribute, which means if we were to check for the information of BMW, we would have 100 there. And that's misleading because if we were to do the same thing with Volvo, it would still be two. So it's important that when you're working with class attributes that you refer to the class itself, not the instance, because by doing this, you affect both of them. Anyway, now that we know a bit about the theory of how class attributes work, let's look at how we can actually use that at class method decorator in our class. So I'm just going to remove all of that. And then I'm just going to return to the car class. And for convenience, I'm going to insert a string dunder method so that when I print the car, we get some useful information such as the brand and the top speed. I don't want to get that crazy object representation back. So I'm just going to define it as is. But above that, I'm going to create an alternative constructor so that we don't need to define the top speed every time we create the car. We can just insert the car brand and based on whatever database we have, we can retrieve the information regarding that car and insert the top speed automatically. So here we're going to create a class method. So first we will annotate it as at class method and then we will create that method, auto top speed. And as you can see, this time we're going to get something called CS, CLS, which stands for class because we're not using the instance anymore. We are affecting the class directly. And all we need to insert here is a string and we will return self. Now, since I don't have a database of all the cars in the world, I'm just going to invent one. So here I have my database of type string to integer and it contains the information for a BMW and a Volvo and their top speeds. And based on the brand that the user enters, we're going to try to get one of these top speeds. So here I have top speed of type integer or none is going to equal database.get. And we want to lower that brand because of course the user might 
have a different spelling and we just want to make sure that we can recognize it. So BMW and Volvo are both lowercased in the database to make this just easier to recognize. Now, since the get method can return none, if it does not find a key with the value we specify, we need to check that the value is not none. So if there is a top speed, we're going to set the top speed to that top speed. Else, that just means we don't have that car in our database. So we're going to set a default and it's going to say could not find that brand in our database using the default of 200. And then the top speed will be set to 200. And at the bottom, all we need to do is return the class with the brand set to the brand and the top speed set to the top speed. So here we're returning an object with this custom constructor. And this is quite cool because now if we were to go to the bottom and my string dunda method is not inside the class even, so we're going to indent that. But if we were to go to the bottom and create an instance of our class using the new class constructor, you're going to see that it's going to be able to grab the information from the database and return to us a class that contains that information. And here we did it by referring first to the class name and then calling the custom constructor directly. We did not create an instance first because this is a class method. It belongs to the class, not to the instance. So something else we can do inside our class is create another class method. And this one is going to return the total cars created. And that's going to return an integer. And all we need to do here is return the class dot total cars. And this will refer to the class attribute at the top. It's not going to refer to anything inside the initializer. Before, when we tried to type in BMW dot total cars, this referred to the class attribute for the time being. If we just referred to it as is and printed the output, it would refer to that car attribute. But if we were to actually set the value there, it would create an attribute inside our class called total cars. And that would be really confusing because it would not access the class attribute anymore. BMW.TotalCars is actually self.TotalCars because it refers to the instance. So once again, it's very important you refer to the class itself and not to the instance if you want to access total cars. But now with this, we can actually check how many cars we have. So we can type in cars or car.TotalCars and we should print that or not total cars, but total cars created and we should have one as an output. Now we can even create two more cars because we are a car factory now. And here I'm going to create a Volvo still with that auto top speed constructor. And I'm going to create a Mercedes, which isn't included in our database. So that's going to return a default. And one thing I want to do is actually use our special class method instead of the attribute itself. And now when we run this, you're going to notice that after creating two cars, we're going to have three in total. I mean, obviously after the BMW. And for the Mercedes, since it wasn't included in the database, we gave it a default of 200 kilometers an hour. So yeah, that's how the at class method decorator works in Python. The main point being that it affects the class, as you can see by CLS being written everywhere instead of self, which only affects the instance.